Hey party people, what's going on? Welcome to today's video. Today we're focusing on a few ways that you can finish your leather edges. I will be showing you some methods that I use and also walking you through the basic application process. A link to all the products can be found down below in the description box. If you're new to the channel, I invite you to become a subscriber so you can stay up with all the content that I post. I'll see you at the finish line. Okay, so let's get into our first product. This is called EcoFlow Gum Triganthus. I would rate this as good. A small bottle goes a long way, and also note that this is not a paint, but a burnish. I'm including it in this video because if you want a nice, natural-looking edge, this is a great option. It's a low-cost, easy-to-do finishing technique. You use the burnisher tool on the edge to buff away the excess fibers. Apply the product with a Q-tip, cotton dauber, or even your finger. Allow it to dry, and then use the burnisher tool or slicker to slick the edge. This seals the edge and gives it a low sheen gloss. Here I'm showing you the difference between a burnished edge and an unburnished edge. Okay, next product up is called Phoebe's Dura Edge Coat. Rating, also good. Now for many years, I used the Phoebe's product and I liked it. I thought it was a good quality and provided a nice finished edge and it's pretty easy to find. Now what I didn't like about it was the color selection. It's very limited and doesn't reflect current color trends. The application process, however, is a breeze. You simply apply it and let it dry. When I use this product, I generally will use or apply two to three coats. Angelus Leather Edge Paint Rating Okay. This is a leather acrylic paint, so not designed as an edge paint per se. That being said, when I've been in a jam or needed a small amount, I've gone this route. It comes in a wide variety of colors and is fairly inexpensive. I personally haven't had any problems using it, but honestly, I can't say how it performs over a long period of time. This is the same paint that many sneakerheads use on their shoes, plus it's formulated for leather. This brand is well known and highly respected so I consider it a safe gamble. Blue strap. Now let me show you guys something. So now this blue strap is a reference sample of a really good edge paint application. Now mind you, this is kind of unfair since it comes from a designer bag and was probably made in a factory using special tools. But my goal was to achieve a similar result. To get this kind of look, you'll need to add another product underneath your paint called a primer or a base layer. So these next two products that I'm gonna show you have that as an option. Okay, so let me introduce you to this next product. So this is called Fenice or Fenice. I would rate this product as above average. Now I've been using a cotton Q-tip up until this point, but now with the primer, I'm finding it just doesn't work. The coverage on the surface is rough and uneven, so I've had to switch to an all. Now this is hard to kind of describe the application process, but if you watch, you can see I'm kind of doing a layering and a tapping motion. The goal is to get it to sit smoothly on the surface and to be even at the same time. Now this does take a little bit of work, but you can get the hang of it. The idea is that you want to fill in the ridges and create a rounded edge with the primer. The edge paint will then sit on top of this. In terms of the steps, you apply the base coat first, allow it to dry, sand the surface slightly, then apply the edge paint, allow to dry, and then add a second layer of edge paint. Let me introduce you to the last and final product in this series. This is by a company called Giardini. I would rate this as excellent. Out of the entire list, I think this one is the superior choice and would consider it the Ferrari of the edge paints. The application steps are the same as the Fenice, but the results are just a few notches above and I feel makes it a standout product. Yes, it's more expensive, but the cool thing is that they have a lot of different formulations. They also have a wide range of stock colors. They follow the current color trends and offer metallics, neons, and also do custom mixes. Now I got hooked on this product, a free trial size kit, and I got some really 
excellent results. Now, I don't want to use anything else. It's just that good. If you're interested, I encourage you to take advantage of their free trial. I'm not sure how long it will last. A link has been left for you in the description box. Make sure you tell them that I sent you. The free trial pack comes with a base coat and a black edge paint. Okay, so let's go over the steps once more. You apply the base coat, allow it to dry completely, sand the surface. I used a 400 grit sandpaper. Apply the edge paint, allow to dry completely, and then you add a second layer of edge paint. That is all you have to do. Lastly, let me just show you a side-by-side -side comparison. So this is the Phoebings with the Fenice. So this is the Fenice with the Giardini. So if you look at these two, the difference is very, very slight, but it is noticeable. The Giardini just fills in the gaps a little bit better than the Fenice. That's it for today's video. If I had to sum up what we've covered, everything counts. The accuracy of your cut edge, is the leather thick enough or has it been stabilized? Sanding either by hand or machine. Do you want a smooth round rubbery edge? Use a primer or a base coat. How you apply is how you will dry. Always, I wish you back success and I'll see you next time. Thank you for watching.